my family went with my brother and his youngest kid to the family reunion. Um, and then on that Sunday coming back, um, there was a terrible dust storm um, that just kicked up and just covered the highway. Um, just a big black wall, just, I'm sure it was terrifying. I don't know, but it caused a 22 car pileup, just a brutal, nasty car accident. And it killed eight people. And five of those eight people were, um, our family. So I lost my wife, Courtney and my son Riggins and my daughter, Frankie and my brother race. And my nephew Ryder, they were all gone. Um, my son Blue, so my, our middle child Blue, uh, he survived the car accident. Not really sure how, um, but he he uh, he had a couple of cuts on his head and he had a broken hand. But they pulled him out of that car somehow, and um, and I don't really know what he saw what he experiences experienced or what he remembers but but blue survived and i remember um i remember because they they said hey there's one survivor we're life lighting him to the to the hospital in salt lake so i'm four hours away so i got to drive four hours to get there and i remember you know you have so many thoughts going through your head um on that car ride but I remember thinking like if, if, and, and, and the, the guy who called me, he said, there's just one survivor. So, so I don't even know if it was from my car or just in general. I don't even know whose kid it is. They just said three-year-old kid, blonde hair, blue eyes. And my three-year-old had blonde hair, blue eyes. So I was just kind of hoping it was blue, but I don't know. And I remember thinking, dude, like if blue's not alive, like, I don't, I can't be here. Like, I need to be dead. Like, I don't, I remember having that thought. And um, it's weird because you're so broken. So you just kind of flip through denial, anger, shock, bargaining. You just kind of flip through all those emotions. But every one, like every 20 minutes, that thought would pop into my head. Like, if, if this isn't blue, like, I'm putting a bullet in my head. Like, I'm done. Um, but I get to the hospital and it, and, uh, blues alive and, um, uh, spent the night with my son in my arms and, um, never saw the rest of my family again. That was, uh, that was July 25th, 2021. So that was about 20 months ago. We're coming up on the, we're coming up on the two year mark and, you want me to keep going or should I stop or? <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm just trying to, you know, like it's like I knew your story, you know, but hearing you say it, you know, and telling me one-on-one is this entire different reaction. So just don't mind. I'm just trying to well, collect myself a little bit. And then like, dude, I never, never seen my dad cry in my entire life. And, and like that night, that night. And so I'm in the hospital holding my kid and, I did. I literally. I think I just stared at the wall for however long. I just, you know, you're just in complete shock, and then the grief hits you in waves. And and like my dad was in the hospital room with me that night, and my mom was too. And my dad would get up to the bathroom, and I don't know if he didn't think I could hear him, but he was just wailing, just crying, sobbing, like. Sounds you didn't even think a human could make, really. Just, and it was my dad. And it, it like reality, it just is weird. Like it's just, it, it's hard for it to set in. But when it does, it, it's a real son of a bitch. And then, and then it leaves. You know, and that's a weird thing with acceptance. Like when people think of the stages of grief, like anger, denial, bargaining, depression, accept, like whatever it is. I don't even know the order because it doesn't fucking matter to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, sorry if I, I didn't ask you about language, but, um, don't worry about it. Let it loose. Um, but do like the thing with back to the acceptance thing, like 
okay, it's not like you just do these stages of grief and then you get to acceptance and like, oh, like I'm done. I did. It's not like you graduated high school. Like you throw your hat in the air, like we're done with the trauma. No, like you're screwed. The <laughs> trauma is going to be there your whole life. And the weird thing with acceptance is, is like, David, I have days where I can accept it. I can, I can get out of bed and like, okay, this is my reality. It happened. What can I do? What can I control? What's in my power of control? Those are my good days. Those are the best days that I can have. Or how can I make this terrible situation good? What good can come from it? Let's try to do that because that's in our power. But dude, like other days and other moments, you can't accept it, man. I don't want to accept it. It's not fair. It's bullshit. And we weren't perfect people, but like we were good people, man. I was a good husband. I was a good father, like innocent kids. You kidding me? Like it doesn't make any sense. And on the days I can't accept it, those are the shitty days, dude, where you're just feeling sorry for yourself. Why me? And you're just kind of wrapped in the grief. And it's really shitty. So on those days, what what have you found yourself doing to get through the days that you don't feel like you accept it? Um, well, I used to drink um, or drugs or... Um, I take a, um, like I'd call my brother, sister, parents, in-laws, whoever, like, Hey, can you come watch blue? I take sleeping pills at one in the afternoon. Just like I'm done for the day. Um, I used to punch myself. I just right here. I just unload on myself. I thought I could knock myself out, but I don't, I can't, I couldn't, <laughs> but it just get all black eyes. But, but then like, at least mm -hmm. Like at least it would get this pain would get my mind off the other pain, but not really. But like I thought maybe it could. <laughs> you know, right. it was not good, not good. But no. now what I do, um, I talk, I tell people, man, like, dude, I, it hurts, man, and it doesn't get better. Time doesn't heal all wounds. That's bullshit. Like, it hurts, man. And when you tell people. There's just something about it, dude. I can't even really explain it. But all I know is I tell someone I hurt and I feel less hurt. <laughs> um, and serve. I serve. I do things for other people. So instead of drinking, I would hop on my one wheel and I'd go down downtown Salt Lake and I'd hand out food to homeless people. Or I'd um, someone just lost their kid. I'd get cookies and go to their house and just any anything I could to just do something that wasn't about me. And dude, the thing with trauma, it makes you so selfish, dude. It makes you so selfish because trauma is you're just thinking about your pain. And so you don't really have time to think about anyone else's pain. Like why even give a shit? Like I'm hurting really bad. And so mm -hmm. what I've learned is if I don't think about me, we is greater than me. And what I found, it, it's the whole Jesus thing, honestly. It's the story of Jesus, which is ironic for me because I don't even believe in God necessarily. But yeah, it's like help other people, love your neighbor, love your enemy. And those two things. So back to your question, I tell people and I try to help people. And that's, yeah, that's kind of what what's helped. But And then I, I guess, um, you know, I just kind of... Um, I'm learning to be easier on myself and, and be like, Mace, you've been doing good. You can have a shitty day. Like, yeah, you can be mad and just cry and just feel it. And I've gotten better at just being sad and then just being done being sad and trying to do something good. You know, you mentioned when, uh, you know, when you first heard the news and you were trying to wait on the news to see if your son survived. And if you were saying if he didn't, you wouldn't be here anymore. And, you know, coupled with the idea of, you know, innocent kids, your whole family, what is the shift of your perspective comparatively to, or even when you found out that, you know, your son was alive and, you know, the why me questions, what is, how did this shift your perspective on life? Like the, you know, the unexplainability of why something like this would happen. So a lot of people ask me, like, what have you learned? And there's few things that I've actually learned, like that I had no clue about before. And like, I actually like, wow, like something brand new that I learned. There's a couple, but it's, 
it's more of the perspective. It's just shifted my whole perspective. And it's not necessarily like we before me. I knew that. I grew up playing basketball. I knew the importance of teamwork. But now I see it totally different way. So I think it's just the whole perspective shift. Like, let me give you a quick story of like how my sh- perspective shifted. So this was probably just after the funeral with my family. So this is pretty quick after the accident. So I'm still in it pretty good. And I'm driving and I see a homeless family to my right as I'm turning and um, dad, mom, couple kids running around behind him corner of like a gas station guy has a sign up and I just remember like dude that looks awesome like you you that looks like heaven on earth to me like I would do anything to be homeless with my family that looks like Christmas morning <laughs> it looks awesome <laughs>